By the end of this video, you're going to understand what the future of building AI apps and AI agents looks like and how you could start building better AI user experiences today. Because AI tools in 2026 won't be built around walls of AI text or brittle front ends that break every single time that there's a model change. Instead, the best AI apps and AI agents are going to be built with generative user interfaces, which are interfaces that adapt to the model output and give users rich and actionable ways to be able to interact with AI. And this shift matters for you if, one, you're building AI products, two, you're designing AI agent workflows, three, you're shipping internal AI tools, or four, you're creating co-pilots, AI assistants, or any AI-first tools. Because models are going to keep getting smarter, but UX determines whether or not your app is going to be ignored or adopted. So instead of forcing your users to read very text-heavy AI output, modern apps are going to let users take actions, make decisions, manipulate data, and move work flows forward directly from inside of the interface. So let's break down exactly what this shift to generative user interface is and why it's critical that if you're building AI apps or AI agents that you begin to do this today. The way that you're going to be able to build out these beautiful user experiences is using C1 by Theses because if we scroll down right here we can actually see what this looks like with a live demo. For example, let's say that we were creating an AI tool that was showing you stocks to watch. We could click on this right here, and this actually shows you the difference of how these two UIs would typically be generated. So if we look at a regular AI app here on the left-hand side, we would say something like, show me a chart of the top five stocks outperforming the market this year with key trend lines. And then what this actually does is we'll tell you, hey, I won't actually be able to do that, but I can create this text right here. And as we can see, this is just a block of text. And guess what? You're using users don't want to see just a block of text. They want to be able to see something like this. So this actually shows the top five stocks that outperform the market year to date. And we could see that this shows all of these different stocks, shows a photo here, shows a ticker, shows a year to date increase or decrease if there was one. We could see the relative performance right here. We could see the trend lines right here. And we have key insights and takeaways. And as you could see right here, this is a way better user experience here on the right hand side because not only is it more visually appealing, it has way less text. AI users right now are preferring generative UIs like this to just text-based UIs because who on earth wants to read this? I mean, imagine if somebody sent you a text message like this, you wouldn't read it. But if somebody sent you photos or charts and graphs and made it look a lot easier, you would read it. In addition to that, if we come over here, you can also see that this shows related queries right here. And guess what that does? It actually increases the time that people are going to spend on your app. And you you can notice that a lot of other LLMs are actually beginning to move towards this. If you look at things like Gemini or ChatGPT, using them today versus using them two years ago, it's a lot less just text based and a lot more generative UI. And you can actually do this inside of your own tools that you're building out. Because let's face it, if you want your AI app, your AI tool to stand out, you need to make sure that you're staying ahead of the trends that are happening for 2026. And this is one of the number one ways to do it because nobody wants to see all of this text. They want to see graphics like over here. For example, this is another one where if you give me travel ideas for underrated destinations with images and landmarks, you don't just want to see this wall text right here, which is what your AI app would currently be outputting. Instead, you want something like this, which is a lot more visual, and we can actually click in here and be able to mess around with all this, and it updates in real time. Now, in order to actually solve this problem, Theses just released C1. And here's how it works and how you can begin to take advantage of it today. So here's how C1 actually works. C1 is going to be an API layer that is on top of the LLM that builds adaptive UIs in real time. So it returns responses from your model as live interfaces using their React SDK. So essentially what this does is goes through and transforms all the text that the LLM is going through and giving. And we can actually see the way that this works right here. We could see the prompt right here. What did I spend on last month? So the query then gets sent to the back end right here. And we could see that this is where C1 sits with the LLM right here. And this works with ChatGPT. It works with DeepSeek. It works with Claude. It works with Meta. It works with every LLM. And then we could see that that then gets passed back to the back end. We have a generative UI SDK. And then this is the response that people are actually getting. So this is exactly how this works. And it adapts to any form factor while matching your brand's design system, which is incredible. 
In addition to that, it's compatible with all popular frameworks like Versal AI, Copilot Kit, and even AGUI. In addition to that, this works with any LLM and any MCP server. And here's exactly how you could actually go through and set this up. Now here's how you actually go through and integrate C1 in just two simple steps. Step number one is you're going to need to actually go through, and I'm going to show you this in just a second exactly how to do this, and update the backend endpoint to theses and add your theses API key and select your desired model. For example, GPT-5. And the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to install the SDK and update the app's logic in order to render and display interactive real-time responses seamlessly using C1. Now here's how this actually looks inside of your code. So you're simply going to come over here and you are going to put in the base URL, which is going to be your API for theses. And then from here, you're going to come over and select the model. Now we can see right here in the terminal that we're going through and we're installing this. And then from here, we're going to come over here. And this is where you're going to do step number two, which is adding in that SDK. Then you'll see again that now this is running when we come down to the terminal and then this is what it actually looks like. We could see that we can now come over into our app, we can ask questions, and we have this dynamic generative UI. Now, in addition to that, what you could do is you can actually come over here and you could add in a system prompt that Theses is then actually going to use. For example, you're a helpful and friendly AI assistant. Here are some rules that you must follow. And then it goes through and it says that it should actually do things as a dashboard with charts and that preset data should be displayed that way. And then you could customize this however you want so your generative UI looks exactly how you want it to. Now, if you want to get started with C1 by Theses today, you could go to the pinned comment below and sign up because they're giving away up to 5 million tokens if you use the link below. Because trust me, you don't want to be shipping AI tools with a legacy UI in 2026. And instead, you want to be building great AI experiences that your users are going to love. And it doesn't matter if you're building an AI co-pilot, an e-commerce app, a learning app, or any AI product. You can use C1 to ship AI apps 10 times faster and cut your front-end maintenance costs by up to 80%. So what are you waiting for? Go below right now and try it for free today.